My dudes, what is up? Welcome to another episode of the book club. We have an amazing book. Honestly, this is one of my favorite books that I have ever read. You'll know, if you do know me, that I'm a history nerd and also just love to learn new things. So this book right here, The Blue Death, does exactly that and it tells an awesome story. You learn some interesting stuff, get a little bit scared about our water system, but really, it's an awesome book. You need to check it out. This is The Blue Death. It is by Dr. Robert D. Morris. It is the intriguing past and present danger of the water you drink. How enticing does that sound? It's really such a good book. I cannot recommend it more, but let's dive into some of the notes that I've taken on this book. This book tells the story by starting off for the first half of sharing the history of cholera in water and waterborne diseases the process that humanity went through to finally realizing that yes, water can cause illness. That's a unique story and it's a cool history lesson. And then it transitioned the book into sharing information about our current water systems, how we've gotten to where we are and the things we need to do in the future. One of my first notes says that doctors got together in Sunderland and announced that there was a cholera epidemic in the city. London then placed a quarantine on all Sunderland ships for 15 days, which makes sense because there's this cholera outbreak and they don't want it to spread, so quarantine is happening. And of course, in the time of COVID-19, we're all familiar with quarantines. But however, that was going to destroy the city's economy, of course, so the doctors got together a second time and sent a message saying that it was not an epidemic. Even though it was, it was absolutely an epidemic. It's a sad fact of life, but it is true that life really has always been about money and politics, people in power making certain decisions, overlooking information on purpose just because they want a certain outcome. It's happening now. It happened in the early 1800s, so it will probably exist long after this as well. And what's even more sad is that health seems to always take a back seat did with this epidemic, this global pandemic of COVID-19, health took a back seat to money and politics. Unfortunately, it probably will also in the future in certain situations. Hopefully as a society, we learn to value health of every individual. Maybe we'll get there someday. Jon Snow, and Jon Snow in this book, he's kind of the guy that first recognized that cholera and other illnesses can be spread through water. Now, Jon Snow, who in this book and in real life, in history, was kind of the guy that discovered waterborne illness or the idea and the concept that illnesses can happen in water and be spread through water to other individuals making them sick. So Jon Snow essentially became the most knowledgeable person on anesthesia. So he was a doctor and learning a variety of different trades, trying to figure out where he was going to fit into the medical world. However, he was struggling to make a living at this point in time. He had a chance 10 second conversation with someone in the street that read about the power of anesthesia and was starting his own practice. This was not a medical person at all. This encounter opened up Snow's eyes to the idea of becoming the first ever anesthesiologist and would change the direction of his life. And thankfully it did because that chance 10 second encounter on the street allowed him to think, wow, you know what? Maybe I can start my own practice of anesthesiology because he's really the forefront individual of doing research on anesthetics and being able to put people under so that they aren't feeling as much pain when surgeries occur. It's pretty wild how this simple interaction impacted his life so much and just allowed him to think a little bit differently so that he could ultimately establish a practice, make enough money so that he could ultimately do research on cholera and other waterborne illnesses. Who knows how long it would have been for us to figure out that illnesses can come from water if it wasn't for this just 10 second conversation that Jon Snow had with this random individual. Now, Jon Snow was a character that really didn't care what other people thought, and thankfully so. Thank goodness that he didn't care what other people, the entire world, thought about his view on cholera. At the time, people 
thought that clouds of air, little pockets of bad air, was what spread illness. In some situations that was true, but for most situations that was not the case. And people thought that cholera was being spread through this bad air. And that was not the case, it was being spread through water. That's what Jon Snow thought. And he was essentially one of the only people that thought that. Everyone else was still in the camp that, hey, people were getting sick from the air. So thankfully, Jon Snow said, you know what, I don't really care what people think. I'm pretty sure I'm right, and I'm gonna figure out ways to prove that. Now, if you didn't know, cholera lives in the small intestine, and it can make its way through the stomach acid. So stomach acid kills off a lot of bad bacteria that could cause illness, but it does not kill off cholera, which is a little scary. That cholera then triggers the intestine to release a substance that it uses to digest food so that this cholera can continue to live on. This, stub this substance provides nutrients to cholera molecules, allowing them to multiply in the small intestine. It is crazy how microorganisms know the exact buttons to press inside of the human body to allow them to live on, to grow, and ultimately kill us. That is so terrifying that these little itty bitty microscopic organisms know how to trigger the body in specific ways to destroy us. It's pretty terrifying. Jon Snow had this wild uncle that traveled a bunch, had cool connections, so that allowed Jon Snow to meet Napoleon, like the emperor, Napoleon of France. So Jon Snow met Napoleon and apparently told the emperor about his views on cholera and how it could be prevented. There's no evidence that Snow's conversation and input that he told Napoleon was implemented, but Paris did end up implementing a new sewer system with two new water pipelines, which ultimately was what Snow was advocating for in some of his writings and what he was advocating for in England. So ultimately, we don't know for sure, but Snow's input to Napoleon could have saved a number of lives in France and helped them get fresh, cleaner water. Unfortunately, Snow did pass away before people really adopted the concept of cholera and other illnesses being spread through water. However, people did carry on this fight so that we really could recognize that cholera could be passed through and shared via water. But this fight against cholera continued with Pasteur and Koch. They had to fight against the current beliefs that miasmas, miasmas are this bad air, the thought that bad air could make people sick and spread this disease of cholera. Pasteur and Koch, what's awesome about them is that they learned from their experiences and from other individuals. They had those beliefs that miasmas spread cholera. Over time, their research and conversations show that that's really not the case. So they change their views. How awesome is that? You can change your views if you think something is wrong. That's not a problem. I think people in our current day and age need to take that advice. They need to learn from Pasteur and Koch. Now we're transitioning into the current time, into more modern issues with water systems. But water has always been an issue for growing cities, which makes sense because you have more population, more buildings are being put up, so you gotta have infrastructure that helps carry that water. Chicago is the perfect example. They were one of the worst cities in the world in terms of disease due to unclean drinking water. They decided to create a canal to remove waste down to the Mississippi River. The one issue is with our wastewater, we shove it into our natural rivers and streams, but that's a different topic that we'll talk about in a little bit but they shoved all that wastewater into the Mississippi River. The issue is that angered the states below where they were shoving that waste. So if the Mississippi River is coming down, then if Chicago's here, they shove all their waste there, but then that waste gets carried down the rest of the Mississippi River and those southern more so states. And those states were getting angry because they didn't want Chicago's waste polluting their river where they utilized that water for different means. And ultimately, this was allowed after years of lawsuits, but in the end, money and politics worked out and Chicago was able to dump their waste in the Mississippi River. It is sad, but again, money and politics went out in terms 
of thinking about the health and safety of people and the world. Still a trend that's going on today, a trend that happened back in the 1800s. Hopefully a trend that will stop soon, but it's not looking too great. So we got to keep fighting for the health and the well-being of individuals and our planet. It's so easy to think that the dismantling of truth and the treatment of lies as fact is just something that's happening now in our political culture, but I'm here to tell you that is not the case. That has been happening for centuries. It happened back in Jon Snow's time. It happened when America was just being established and cities were coming up, and it's happening now. It's happened in the world of the water systems. It happens in our government. It happens with our food laws. It happens with environmental law. Money and power, blatant lies, treated as truth. Sadly, it's all part of the system. So really, what we can do is to sit back and realize this happens. It's been happening forever. How can we step back and get educated to have our own views and our own insights and to be able to have conversations with people that we don't agree with so that we can understand where they're coming from and then we can share our thoughts so that others and other individuals can understand where we're coming from. That's how you live in a successful society, people. Just have conversations. You don't need to yell at each other all the time. Over time, since we produce a lot of waste and we shove it into our natural environment, we needed to figure out a way to purify this sewage water. And to do that, it was kind of in a shady way. This one contractor turned to chlorine. And chlorine is actually how we purify a lot of our water now in our water treatment systems. It really does work for the issue of getting rid of some of the sewage elements and some of those other things that can cause disease in our water. But the issue is chlorine, after some studies have recently been released, can also cause cancer. How scary is that? The thing that we're trying to use to prevent disease is ultimately causing a different disease. Now, I have always been of the mindset that I think our food and our water are going to eventually be the two main reasons that we see an increase in cancer in our lifetime. Hopefully we figure that out soon. But unfortunately, again, the power and money and politics come into play where the lobbyists for food and water groups don't want strict regulations so that these businesses can keep making money. It's a scary time. It's really scary when you read this book. You don't just get scared of the water. You get scared of all the politics that prevent us from being able to have more awareness of what we're putting into our body and the government protecting us on that front. Unfortunately, if we do continue to dispose of our waste in the way that we are by shoving it into rivers and streams, we're really never going to eradicate waterborne illness we really do need to figure out a better way to dispose of our waste because if we're going to shove our waste into water that we ultimately end up drinking, it's not an ideal situation to think about and it's really not ideal in terms of trying to get rid of illness that is in water. It seems as though every major industry that in some way impacts human health, whether that's water, GMO, sugar, have massive firms dedicated solely to protecting their companies in the industry and not the people consuming the products. I know I had talked about that just a couple seconds ago, saying that there are specific organizations created to have the business interest of those products being protected as opposed to the human rights, the rights of the consumer protected. There are lobbyists specifically dedicated to preventing the consumers from knowing and having information on the products that they're consuming. It's sad. I don't really see that changing anytime soon because that's going to have to be something that's managed on the political side. They're going to have to prevent certain lobbies and lobbyists and lobby organizations from influencing certain decisions that are being made. Sadly, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Maybe you have had this happen. I've heard stories of it happening before, but every medical professional gets major decisions wrong sometimes. Sometimes, like before modern medicine, they still prescribe the exact thing that will make your illness worse, leeching, 
or trying to bleed individuals because they think bleeding that individual will remove some of those toxins or that bad blood. That ultimately was not what they needed. That was quite the opposite. So that ultimately ended up killing the individual. Same thing with cholera. So with cholera, you're sick, you're vomiting, you have diarrhea, so you're losing a lot of fluid. So doctors at the time said, yo, drink more water. And that still happens with cholera and other waterborne illnesses. Doctors will tell you to drink more water when you're losing fluid because they're just not aware of these waterborne illnesses and these bacteria and viruses that are in your body. It takes a long time to test for that. So that really still happens today where doctors are telling you to do one thing, but ultimately that one thing is what's making you sick and will make you more sick. A little scary how modern medicine still has that issue. Another frightening element to all of this is that the water systems across the United States, so think like the pipes, the infrastructure, the water management systems, the filtration systems, all of that is decaying at a rapid rate. And our political individuals that are in charge of ensuring this infrastructure is taken care of have not been doing a great job because there's not been enough funding or resources available to get all of these pipes, these treatment plants updated and replaced in time. So sometime in probably the next 15 to 20 years, a lot of this stuff is going to go bad all at once and we're definitely not gonna have enough money or people available to replace them in a safe manner. So it could be a scary time for water consumption in the United States. Another scary element of water and our systems is the thought of water terrorism. Now, personally, I've never really thought about that myself until reading this book, but with a lack of focus on our water systems from a governmental standpoint and the nonchalance we pay to our tap water because how many of us think about what is in our tap water we just flick it on and drink because it's so easy and we assume that the government and the water treatment plants are going to take care of us but if you read this book there are a variety of examples where water treatment employees and plants have screwed up caused a lot of people to die and to have illnesses in recent news we saw a waterborne illness come from a poor water system up in Flint, Michigan. On that topic, a foreign agent could be easily introduced to a water system, causing damage and illness and death to so many people. Honestly, that is probably the easiest way for a terrorist or a bad individual to harm a vast number of individuals. So that's very scary because our infrastructure is really not being taken care of. We do need to make sure that is on the top of the agenda, a high priority for our local, state, and federal officials so that we make sure we have a stable, secure system of transporting water, treating water, making sure it's protected so that we as individuals are protected so that the water that we drink is healthy and that we don't get sick from it. Ultimately, The Blue Death is one of the best books that I have ever read. I loved it. It was informative. It had that awesome history element in the beginning, talking about Jon Snow and the fight to figure out how cholera transports through water and that other diseases can transport through water as well. But then it brings us to modern times, talking about our water systems and how through some of the growth that cities have experienced, specific examples of how waterborne illness has caused a number of people to die in modern era, in current times, 50 years ago, 25 years ago, three years ago. It's an interesting read. I highly recommend it to anyone living in the United States, anyone that drinks water. You should probably read this to get informed on your own drinking water and maybe rely a little bit more on yourself in terms of trying to make sure the water that you consume is healthy. The more you get educated on this, the better. I will tell you, I don't drink water without it being filtered. Whether that is through a Brita filter, through a filtration device on our faucet or through our fridge. If you do have a system like that, some type of filtration, that will vastly help you. And a lot of people think that it doesn't matter. I'm here to tell you it does. This book is here to tell you that it does. Your drinking water is very important. 
what you consume in your body is very important. So really think about the things that you eat and you drink. This book is awesome. You should read it. Again, highly recommend it. One of my favorite reads of all time. It's up there with one of my top favorite books. Honestly, it's probably tied between the Steve Jobs biography and the Blue Death. Those are like my two favorite on the top of my list right now. So get out there, read it. Couldn't beat it. I loved it, but I'll love to hear what you guys think. If you do ultimately read this book as well, please have a conversation with me in the comments. I would love to know what you think especially about drinking water because it is a hot topic. Some people think that bottled water is safer, that some bottled water tastes different than tap water versus other different bottled water. Is your tap water really safe? Do you think it's safe? Hit me up in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. But I will see all of you in another video. And again, also in the comments, hit me up with some good book recommendations. I'm always looking for another good read. But I will see you in the next video. Have a good one and try to be safe with the water you drink out there. Peace.